Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Well, hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. Oh, hi. Um, I, you know, I like to say when I see my wife holding on to her phone, she's like doing something. I always assume she's doing something like from me, like a tag. Oh, really? From me. <laughs> and I like to say that she just can't put me down. And uh, and that yeah. makes it easier for, for me. <laughs> when she's really just playing a game or who knows what she's doing. doing. Something. Yeah. Who right. knows? Yeah. So uh, how's your how's your phone game right now? Feel pretty good? On you lock? know, I, I don't play games on my phone, but I sure do on my iPad. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the good. It's an isolated activity. Yeah. It's good that it's a it's a bespoke device for gaming. You sit yes. on your couch. You put on your crime shows and yep. you play some play some Candy Crush. I play uh, oh, I, uh, kind of like Candy Crush, very similar, but it's okay. it's called something else. Yeah, and then I awesome. have this like Tetris game that I play all the time, where you try to get the rows, you know, mm-hmm. before you run mm-hmm. out of space. It's it's very similar to Tetris. Okay, um, all right. But I play those two things all the time. Awesome. Well, yep. we're we're going to be talking all about your problems today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for it. <laughs> no, in fact, we, we've had a number of people uh, uh, chime in in a conversation that was started by one of our members in the community about uh, about troublesome behavior around phones and social media. And so we're going to take that on. Yes. It's not the first time we've taken on something like this, but uh, it is timely. And apparently it's on a lot of people's minds. So we're going to jump into the fray here and share some thoughts and some of your thoughts uh, from the community in this show. Before we get started, head over to Take Control ADHD to get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list and we will send you an email each time a new episode is released. You can connect with us on Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest at Take Control ADHD. But to really connect with us, join us in the ADHD Discord community. A fantastic place and it's super easy to jump into the general community chat channel. Just visit TakeControlADHD.com slash Discord. You will be whisked over to the general invitation and login. And if you're really looking for a little bit more, if the show's ever connected with you and you're interested in supporting it and getting access to some other goodies along the way, you can do that. For a few bucks a month, you can uh, join the ADHD membership community right now. It's hosted on Patreon to give us listener-supported podcasting. For a few dollars a month, you help guarantee that we continue to grow the show, add new features, and invest more heavily in our community. Visit patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast to learn more. And you know what time it is, Nikki. It's the new year. You know how excited I get about the new year because I get to talk about my favorite invisible tool in my tool chest. That's Text Expander. Yes. This week's episode is brought to you by Text Expander, one of the best invisible tools in my tool chest. Uh, this tool is always there running in the background waiting for me to type an abbreviation or a snippet in Text Expander parlance. When the Text Expander sees the snippet, it goes to work, instantly expanding from just a few characters on my keyboard to words, sentences, paragraphs, the calculations, entire pages of text. It's amazing. It's super easy to do. You you uh, find something that you type over and over and over again, and uh, you add it to the Text Expander library. You save it in that library so that when you type the abbreviation for that batch of text, it will expand anywhere text is accepted on your computer. It's absolutely incredible. You can even share it. You can get your whole team or your whole family to access the content they need to use every day. You can organize it by department or group. If you're in a work setting, it's just fantastic. And I have one simple tip for all you text expander adopters out there uh, this new year. Tis the season to use date snippets. People, if you're like me, and you're left to your own devices, you're typing 2022 over and over and over again in every email, in every meeting request, you're typing 2022 because it's in your fingers. But if you use Text Expander's handy date snippets anywhere you insert a date into your writing, you're going to get the right date every time. Text Expander even handles date math for you so you can add days, hours, minutes, everything with ease built right into the snippet. It's really, really incredible. You never get caught typing the wrong year again. Text Expander is available on Mac, Windows, Chrome, iPad, and uh, iPhone. 
And for listeners of the ADHD podcast, you can get 20% off your first year of service. Just visit TakeControlADHD.com slash TextExpander. You'll know you're there because it says, welcome, Taking Control listeners. And you can redeem your 20% off for the year. The way we work is changing rapidly. Make work work the way your brain works by saying more in less time with less effort. Using Text Expander are great thanks to the Text Expander team for sponsoring the ADHD podcast. That's fantastic. Yeah, I it's like a lot. That of, tip. It's good. Yeah, it's a good That's tip. A good tip. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't help hey, your fingers. Yeah. No, but it does help you not do 2022 when it's really 2023. Oh my goodness! Right? If only. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Hey, before we get started on the show, I just yeah. want to uh, remind people that we have some upcoming coaching groups. Uh And you can find those coaching groups on our website at Take Control ADHD. We have a couple of them coming up that will uh, be open for enrollment at the end of this month. And uh, we'll be starting those groups in February. So check them out. And uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Absolutely. You can get there. All all the wait lists are up on the website. You can wait list for a specific coaching group. So just go into the GP or to the group coaching uh, section and uh, you can get on those wait lists and be notified right away, right, right away, away when they get in there. Okay. Phone, phone. Where's your phone? Uh, yeah, so this this started as a Discord member post uh, who posted a request for help in the ADHD support channel in Discord, which is available to patrons at the deluxe tier and higher. Um, and and we'll, we should say, uh, we don't use anybody's names when talking about Discord and, or Patreon posts on the show. It is going out publicly, and we always get permission from folks when we include posts that are asking for support before we even talk about the post. So this is right. unnamed and it is, uh, we, we have permission. So uh, shall we just read the post and launch? Yeah, and, and you right. should be the reader because you are so good at reading. Oh, we have so many reading things today. <laughs> well, and I'll so read some see. of it. Yeah. Okay. I, I won't make you do the whole thing, Pete, because that's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's, that's really nice. Uh, so uh, let's see here. I... Um, I think I have an addiction to social media and technology, especially with my phone. Anyone else deal with this? Have you found ways to reduce it? It's so bad that it's affecting my affecting my job and life. The problem is, one, my phone has become a multi-use tool, communication with my coworkers, alarm clock, etc. Two, I set boundaries, but my brain always finds a loophole or does not honor them unless they are instituted and enforced by external force. I don't know what the first steps are that I can take to cut back on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. This person is the only person that I know that's dealing with this. Yes, we've never heard of this before. We've never heard of it. totally alone, which is, of course, a lie. And if you go, of course, because if you go to any public place, like let's say a restaurant or uh, a concert, grocery store, uh, shopping mall, um, you're going to find people on their phones. Yeah. Right? right. Everywhere you go, they're on their phones. Now, whether yeah. they're looking at social media or technology, I have no idea, but it is definitely, she's not alone. Yeah. Not alone. Sure. And uh, the community jumped in. We already, yes. we, we have a number of folks who jumped in and just, and, and said things like, I realized this morning that I need to reinstate the no screens before 8 a.m. rule. I want to knit and read books in the morning at eight when the dog nosed me for her breakfast. I hadn't knit a stitch or read a word that wasn't on a screen. Uh, or mm-hmm. I love to read, uh, I love to read often downloaded download books from the library. However, I found that I got very distracted by everything I can access from my iPad when all I really planned to do was use the reading app. And uh, I want to reiterate that you are not alone. I definitely got hooked to the iPhone games, which is my biggest time suck on my phone. There are things I'd rather do even on the phone that I get distracted with these or other things. And that purchases are such a problem for me. I end up doing the work around my uh, doing the work around to my I end up doing the work around to my work around when I'm getting in a mode. 
Yes, I'm not entirely sure how to fix that, but I I don't think I read it entirely as it was intended. But the, the idea right. is, yeah, we're getting distracted by the stuff that's on our devices. So right. um, we'll talk about some techniques and suggestions that others have have uh, posted in a little bit. First, yes. your your take. Uh, well, I, I, I like we said, it's definitely an issue. She's not alone. Um, and I, I think especially with social media, uh, it, there is, you know, ADHD already has that time blindness, right, where it's really hard to kind of gauge how much time you're taking to do something. Um, and uh, if you're really into it, the time's going to go by faster. And I think that that's where I see the social media getting to be such a problem is that you go into it with the intention that you're only going to look at it for a couple of minutes. But then as you're looking at it, and then all of a sudden, it's like 20 minutes later, 30 minutes later, it's really easy to let the time go by fast when you're, you know, really focused on whatever it is that you're looking at or reading. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I just, it is an issue for sure. It's an issue for all of my clients, most of them anyway. And, uh, and it's something that we talk a lot about in coaching, um, yeah. because it does get in the way. Yeah. Um, uh, so I, I think that <clears throat> the universe is conspiring against me and, uh, I, I feel like I'm the, the last bastion <laughs> of the- <laughs> of of people who really uh, uh, really want to steer away from calling this phone or social media addiction because mm-hmm. addiction is a really specific word. And I've got more I want to talk about related to addiction. But we'll, we'll, I, I want to start with just what um, the way kind of Chad is approaching this stuff and, and the way the world is kind of acknowledging it. And Chad is children and adults with ADHD. That's what Chad stands for. And it it still just says ADD. They haven't, it's it's not a hadada. Uh, right. They, they've gotten really, anyway. So what they say is you have unsuccessful attempts to quit or cut back on whatever the behavior is. There are negative consequences, jeopardizing or losing a significant relationship, job or educational opportunity, or continuing continuation of the behavior despite negative consequences. Do you have anything to add? Mm, no, that's. All right. I have it because I have a tirade. I know, I know. I'm, I'm, ready. I'm ready to lo- I'm ready to launch into my tirade. I know momentarily. Uh, so the the thing that I want to add is that uh, this is to me this is the big one and the big one for ADHD too that you're yes. compulsively using your devices in potentially an unconscious or subconscious effort to avoid something else. This is like the major issue with ADHD, and it results in a lot of ostrich behavior. I don't want to get out of bed. I have trouble making transitions. I pick up my phone and I start scrolling. It, it, the dopamine hit gets, gets going, and suddenly I can't put it down. I have a very difficult time putting it down because I put all the stuff on the phone that attract me and I like it and I want to keep doing it. And also I don't want to get out of bed because what faces me when I get when I get out of bed is hard. And I don't like to do hard things because ADHD tells me not to. So I so agree with that. Yeah. And I think that that's where I want to start with this. And here's mm-hmm. why. Uh, this is the the term addiction I, well, I hate using it when it comes to this. And, and mm-hmm. in a summary of research from the Journal of Behavioral Addiction, the Journal of Behavioral Addiction, those people know a thing or two about behavioral addiction. They say, although the field takes the existence of smartphone addiction as granted, we did not find sufficient support from the addiction perspective to confirm the existence of smartphone addiction at this time. The behaviors observed in research could be better labeled as problematic or maladaptive smartphone use, and their consequences do not meet the severity levels of those caused by addiction. Continued, addiction is a disorder with severe effects on physical and physiological health. A behavior may have a similar presentation as addiction in terms of excessive use and impulse control problems and negative consequences, but what that does not mean it should be considered an addiction. We propose moving away from the addiction framework when studying technological behaviors and using other terms such as problematic use to describe them. Emphasis mine. We recommend that problematic technology use is to be studied in its sociocultural context with an increased focus on its compensatory functions, motivations, and gratifications. Exactly what we're talking about. We use these things 
to compensate for other things that we're not doing well, i.e. our ADHD tendencies are causing us to struggle and we go and and uh, go for the social media, we go pick up the phone, we play our games. To that end, I, it, you know, we're seeing more and more people report the specific anxiety of nomophobia, which is a fear or anxiety around being without your phone and connectivity. But that all seems to stem back to avoidant behavior, again, of something else. I am terrified of being without my device because I don't know what to do with myself. I have no coping mechanism in times of discomfort or uncertainty or boredom, whatever. The phone is a mask behind which we hide from problematic behaviors otherwise. We did a whole What's That Smell episode, episode mm. on nomophobia, the hunt for the disconnected soiree. I'll put the link in the show notes. Oh, good, yeah. This is, this is one of those, we were talking about, you know, things I feel strongly about. This is one I feel strongly about, and I'll tell yeah. you why. Because... While breaking the social media habit feels hard, it's simply not comparable to the battles of drug addiction and alcohol addiction and so on. And saying so diminishes the efforts of people who are struggling with those conditions to get and stay clean. What's more, I believe that thinking in this way can help break problematic behaviors more effectively. Calling it an addiction, it reduces your own agency in solving these problems, right? There are people living with ADHD who really are struggling with severe addiction, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, and I would never want to diminish their experiences because addictive behaviors are so, so prevalent in ADHD. Mm -hmm. I I just, I, I hate that we've given up on thinking in terms of these problematic or maladaptive behaviors, and we call it addiction because it takes away our control. Oh, I'm addicted. Oh my gosh, it's so hard. I'm addicted. And so what? I guess I'm just addicted. I guess it's so hard, it's impossible to solve. And it's not. Mm -hmm. so, so that's it. That's my rant. I, I feel really strongly about this. And uh, I get I get super fired up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I see, I can feel the fire up in you, for sure. And I agree with everything that, that you've said. Um, it's interesting to me, I'm curious, and, and uh, you know, you can edit this out for the live show or for mm -hmm. the regular show. But I mean, is, is there something very personal to you that's wrapped around this? That has that have that makes you feel this way and that strong about it. Sure, I've got family that died of alcohol addiction. I've got, got like it. I've got people who it, it, and we all do. I mean, it's just so prevalent, like yeah, especially yeah. in the United States. It's just all over the place. So I know I'm not alone. But when you watch somebody deteriorate because they have they live with addiction and you yeah. watch the physiological and genetic determinants of addiction when you when i see someone who says you know what i'm addicted to facebook i want to punch myself in the neck like mm -hmm. that is not comparable the and i get thing. really frustrated by it it's a, these yeah. these are behaviors that are in your control you can do it you can mm -hmm. absolutely do it. And you know what? You will feel better in days, not months, years, eras. You'll feel better in days, mm -hmm. right? What, so. are, what do you think about like, because people have also put the uh, addiction kind of label to gaming for people who are gaming uh -huh. too much. Is that, do you feel like that's the same thing as social media or is that different? It's any trigger that is on a device that causes you to, to avoid. Uh, get a dopamine release that allows you to stay here versus confronting something challenging elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. It's the avoidance piece that you're calling out because we're doing like that, that instead of doing something else. It's, like, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a coping mechanism of right. some sort. And I just yeah. feel like, and, and I'm not saying that, I, I'm, I don't want it to, to sound like I'm just saying, oh, your, your problem is, is not a significant problem. Right. You, I know that it feels like a giant problem and I don't want to diminish that. And, and I have a problem with devices too. I was just talking to my wife about it, that, that my problem is often uh, more related to a professional FOMO, that I am terrified of mm -hmm. what is happening with my clients and work activity and demands when I when I'm not connected. Mm -hmm. But and so mine isn't filtered into games or social media distractions. Mine is filtered toward I have to keep on my email. I have to keep on text messages. I have to keep doing these things because I'm terrified right. of what happens if it doesn't. That's my thing. But the yeah. thing that I deal with is not the phone or technology, right? The thing I deal with it's is my else. relationship to mm -hmm. work. Right, and I think right. it's more important for us to assess those relationships to other things 
and recognize that the dopamine push could cause you to eat, could cause you to, you know, increase lethargy. You don't want to get out of bed. It could cause a lot of things. And Mm -hmm. so putting all this weight on technology addiction is Mm -hmm. unfair to these tools that have unleashed just a gazillion uh, wonderful new ideas and things if used correctly right. and healthily, if you develop right. a, 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 a smart relationship. Well, and you're, and, and, and what the journal of behavioral addictions is saying and what you're supporting too, is that it's not saying that it's not a problematic behavior or yeah. an issue. No, it is. not at all. It is. And it can, and there are, you know, there are consequences. I get it, Pete. I really do. I get it. I think that, you know, when I was reading your outline and I I could hear you speaking and I knew that this was something you were really passionate about. And, um, and I think it's an important distinction, you know, because, and and I think I just feel so strongly that it does a disservice to people who are dealing with this stuff. And, And I think we should, as advocates, be very clear about reducing the uh, about not using the word addiction when it comes to technology because that's right. not the challenge. You can overcome the challenges that you're living with. Let's find a way to talk about it in a way that addresses behavior. Sorry. Well, and I think that's a really good point, and that's what some of the suggestions are coming, you know, from our our community too about you know different ways of of dealing with this. Is that you are taking that power back that I can make changes, and I think the biggest thing for. Uh, everyone, ADHDers and, and non-ADHDers when we're dealing with the, the phone and, and games and things like that, is is to try some of these strategies. If you really want to pull back your usage, we have to try them actively. And I think that if you tried it once and it didn't work, you need to keep going back and keep trying it. You know, I don't want people to give up the, the fact that, again, like, oh, I just can't do it. Um, we need to keep working on these strategies to, to get to where you want to be and, and be mm-hmm. living in the boundaries that you want to live in, uh, you know, and using the technology right. the way that you want to use it. Right, right. Um, so how, so I, I'm exhausted from my little rant. I know, it's okay. I, I apologize it's good. for that. But I, uh, I, I think it's, uh, uh, let's dive into why these maladaptive behaviors sure. are so problematic for ADHD. Yes, yes, yes. Well, there have been many studies done over the years related to internet and phone addiction. We've talked about it on the show. Large percentage relate to the relationship between internet phone usage and ADHD. Uh, Many different factors can contribute to a conscious or unconscious desire to spend a great deal of time online. I think that's a really important point is that sometimes we don't even notice we're doing it. It's It's just like I was saying before, it's so easy to get onto social media when you're in bed after your alarm went off and think, oh, I'm only gonna be on here for a couple of minutes and then 15 minutes goes by. That's 15 minutes that you could have had, but now you're late right? Mm -hmm. Because that's the thing that we have to understand with ADHD time. Most people who are late to work or late to events, they're not really late. They're only late around five or 10 minutes. So right there, we just grabbed 10 minutes back of your time. So this is important to, you know, to be thinking about, especially if that's an issue. Uh, But anyway, so I would say lack of stimulation. We've been talking about that. ADHD restricts the brain's neurotransmitters associated with pleasure and reward. What a great dopamine hit is mm-hmm. to get onto social media and uh, or your, you know, whatever you like. I, I like Clarence. He's a talking black lab dog. He's funny. <laughs> and... <laughs> He always is talking bad about his parents and calling them mother fluffers. And it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Such mother fluffers. Yes. Well, and I think that's a really important thing that I want to throw in. And I don't know a better place to to put it than right here. This is a great entree, which is that most social media platforms survive based on the algorithm right? Mm-hmm. It's the algorithm that is determining you like this one thing, you spent more than two seconds looking at this thing, we're going to show you more of that thing. And because of those connections, because of those invisible connections to content, the stuff you look at leads to the stuff you like, uh, you like to look at being presented to you. Uh, they are keeping you on the platform, right? Their design is to keep you looking at the platform to serve more ads and all of that stuff, right? We, we know that that's what that is. Yep. And I uh, am a huge advocate right now of really standing up to the algorithm, like the services, the content you want 
it, go directly to that content. If you want to see the mother, mother fluffing lab, go to that lab profile page and look at that. Mm-hmm. Don't go to your homepage and start just scrolling, looking for things that might because be interesting. Gonna that's what's going to keep you in different. bed. Yeah. Right. That's going to make you 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour late. Find a way to so stand true. up, stand up to the algorithm. Well, Don't and let I it determine say, what your brain does. Two things that you're making me think. If you haven't watched The Social Dilemma on Netflix, watch it. It's very interesting. Super dramatic. And I love the way they they humanize the algorithm. But yes. you're so right. Like it but makes it's, good points. It yeah. makes really good points. And it, and it helps you understand exactly everything that Pete just said, right, yeah. of, of how they capture this. And it's so interesting because the other day I was going through my uh, phone and I kept getting videos of Depeche Mode. Because I had watched one video of a concert and then all of a sudden a a suggested post, suggested post, and it was all about Depeche Mode. And I was like, this is so bizarre, but it's not bizarre because this is what you're, this is what they're doing. So anyway, that's, yeah. Well, and and, and I was saying the social dilemma, there's a, there's a guy in there named Tim Kendall who is, is profiled. He was a former director. I grew up with him. We were kids together and he was, he's the former uh, director of monetization at Facebook. And Mm. he, uh, you know, made a bazillion dollars in the tech economy and went on to be CEO of Pinterest. And like he's big, and now he's an advocate against all of these things, against the algorithm. You see him talking about just how dangerous this stuff can be because, mm-hmm. you know, kids don't have the self-control or awareness to understand what the algorithm is doing to them. It does, they right. don't understand how the the fetishization of uh, of physical beauty on Instagram is causing them to make changes in their lives. They don't understand what the, the power the algorithm mm-hmm. has over them. But those are kids. And I think mm-hmm. that's another argument that we we are allowing the the kids to distance us from our own negative behavior around mm-hmm. this stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so I, I think that's really, that's hugely important is to yeah. is to be aware. So I use RSS, which uh, is, see, sounds like way over technical uh, uh, abbreviation, but it's a very simple way to just say, I like this website and this website and this website and this website. And I have an app called Reader, R-E-E-D-E-R, and I just add the websites to that list. And every morning I look at Reader and it gives me just the posts that I have chosen to see from the websites that I have chosen to follow. And mm-hmm. it has nothing to do with algorithms. It's not the Apple News app that's constantly never ending feeding me sources. It is just what I've chosen. And that there's no algorithm involved. Right. Um, I use Mastodon instead of Twitter, which is a house on fire anyway. But Mastodon has no algorithm. It, I follow individual people that are important to me. And I see their posts without having to get stuck into a mire of algorithmic stuff. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. anyway, that's the that's number one. It's that stimulation, the dopamine. How can you fight being drawn by the dopamine? And the other two factors here, we've already talked about uh, time blindness. Of course, we're not recognizing how long something takes or how much time has passed. So it's very easy to get into that scrolling, you know, hyper-focused scrolling without even knowing that 30 minutes has passed. Avoidance, we've talked about, Pete, um, very much this is connected to why we're using it. It, uh, you know, ADHD is often compared or often paired with depression and anxiety. So when we try to avoid these negative emotions, this can be a good alternative because it is building that dopamine and, and, uh, and, you know, and a lot of times you feel justified, like you can justify it. Like there's ways you Mm -hmm. can, you know, trick yourself. Um, And the avoidance tactic is not specific to ADHD. You know, I think that especially in today's world, it's it's a scary place, you know, for a lot of people. We had this pandemic that's still going on, uh, violence in the world, war, changes in the workplace. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of things that we want to like somehow cope with. And and it feels like this can be one of those things, but it can also be very self-destructive. Yes. For sure. So what do you do? Well, I've already talked about my RSS trick. Uh, yes. Fighting the algorithm. Great. I think if we have any anything that we could do as ADHDers to stand up to the algorithm, that's going to be better for all of our brains. Trust yes. me. It's when you get rid of the algorithm, you feel better. Uh, and so it's a big deal. It is a big deal. And, and you know, I think it's it, it's good 
for us to also, you know, be aware of the fact that there is no clear cut trick or secret ingredient. Uh, everybody is different. You know, what's going to help work with one person is not going to help necessarily with the other person. Um, but again, going back to my point earlier, that doesn't mean you shouldn't try and we want you to keep trying and, and keep, uh, trying to figure out, you know, what works best for you. Mm-hmm. All right. So we have some tips I- and strategies from our discord community. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Here we go. Uh, number one, I have been playing with the app one second or one sec on iOS. It forces a one second breath exercise before it opens the specified app. Then it asks you whether you really want to open it. So it gives you a minute for impulse control. I'm not sure it's entirely working, but at least some <laughs> of the time I say no to the app. Hey, I think that's great. some of the time. Great. Yeah. That's a win. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that's huge. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Keeping my phone in a designated location in the house, top of kitchen refrigerator in my case, rather than with me at all times was a useful starting point. I'm not always successful, but simply removing it from my physical person really helped me disengage from the pool. Again, if it helps some of the time, then it's a win. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I I would add to, I would just add, add to that. I, I think having, like I getting the Apple Watch for me was uh, uh, actually a, a big deal because I have set it so that the notifications that come through my Apple Watch are the most important notifications that I get, right? So I'm not getting everything. I don't get any social media stuff on the notifications. Mm-hmm. I get stuff from my family and stuff from from colleagues at work and things like that. Um, but that means I can leave the phone docked elsewhere in my office. And I never, like when I wander around the the rest of the house, I'm not carrying it with me. I don't mm-hmm. take it on walks. I don't take, like, I don't need to, to do that because I have this smaller device, which feels right. like just another anchor to technology. But I'm telling you, it, it actually made a difference to me. Moving the, the phone, which has near limitless possibilities for distraction and leaving it to the watch, which has very limited uh, use for distraction. I can't, I mean, I can't get distracted by my watch. I just can't. Mm-hmm. I've tried. I've tried to play games on the watch. It's stupid. You can't mm-hmm. do it. I, no. I, can't, oh, gosh, I can't make no. sense of it. So, yeah. um, so that was, that was a big deal for me. So. Well, and, and something else to add to that. I think there is an out of sight, out of mind factor that is, you know, in your favor there, because when you're, when you're, when the phone is not in your sight and you don't mm-hmm. see it, you know, getting bright because of a notification anywhere, if, even if the sound is off, mm-hmm. not having that to look at and just knowing it's not around you. I mean, there's something about that too, is that it's just kind of out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, try removing social media apps from your phone, only accessing them through a computer or a tablet or older phone that is used just for that purpose. It might be easier to limit usage if those apps aren't as handy, but still accessible for the time you allot to them. I I just want to amplify this. I think it's hugely important. And I, you know, I, I think it's good to remove those from sight. I would also say if you really have trouble with it, if it's really damaging and you feel like you're on a roller coaster of, yes, I have it in control. And then, oh, my gosh, the next t- next three days later, I'm out of control again. Or maybe it's a month later, I'm out of tr- control again. Whatever that roller coaster is, I really evaluate the, the utility of those apps in your life, right? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I just cannot say how vastly improved my life got when I deleted Instagram, the account. I don't have an account. When I deleted Twitter, the account. I don't have an account on Twitter anymore. Like those, like the weight that is lifted from knowing not only is it not in my presence, but I don't have an allegiance to it anymore is huge. The only reason I have Facebook is that I, uh, uh, you know, I have clients who use who have Facebook pages, and I have to be able to log in and troubleshoot. I haven't Mm -hmm. logged into my personal Facebook account in years. And Mm -hmm. I am so much better for it. People Mm -hmm. know where to find me, it turns out. They can find me who are the most important people that I want to talk to. They know where I am. They know where I, uh, I'm not, you're not lost if you're on Facebook. (laughs) It's okay if your brain is healing and you're off that device, if you stand up to that particular, you know, algorithm. And I I hear it. Like there are lots of reasons to be on Facebook. And I just feel like the, the reasons not to be on these platforms are so much bigger. They're so Mm -hmm. much bigger. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's it. I'm going to have you read the next one too. Oh, okay. 
Um, there is a browser extension called News Feed Eradicator. It replaces your feed with an inspirational quote so you can't doom scroll because there's nothing to see. I only use it with Facebook, but I can click on the bell and see what people have posted and go read those posts. I can click on my groups for individual users, but I can't just scroll through whatever the algorithm comes up with. There's a nice, there's a nice happy medium. If you don't want to delete yeah. your account, like I'm using the nuclear option, use that browser extension. That's right. actually, I find that comically good technology. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Love Absolutely. I love it. I love it. All right. I got a Kindle. Yes, my family rolled their eyes and couldn't understand why I needed yet another device, but it works for me. I reach for it when I want to read so I can focus on doing only that. That's great. Outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally, I, I'm an advocate of that approach. Mm -hmm. Um you have to retrain your brain, get your muscle memory to reach for other things you'd rather be doing instead. It's the only way good habits form. Regular practice, it is so hard to start and then it's so hard to keep going. I think so too. And I, I want to add and advocate for, again, finding a healthy use of your technology that is uh, that you're reaching for instead of the social media and the news doom scrolling. Like maybe get into photography. Like, Open, mm -hmm. instead of opening Facebook or TikTok, open your Photos app and take some dope photos with your camera and enjoy editing photos on your technology, right? That's it, all that exists right there. Make a movie, do something exuberant to, uh, you know, open, get the day one app and uh, start journaling, right? Mm -hmm. Use your tech for stuff. Like we talk about tech for all of the bad things, but yeah. there are so many awesome things that you can do if you choose to create rather than consume. Mm -hmm. There are vastly more ways to create that are underused than consume that we use. And I, I really we good just, point. So yeah, really good point. Uh, create a lock screen that reminds you that you have better things to do than be on social media. I think uh, that would at least give me pause before opening my phone mindlessly to the time suck app of choice to do something else more constructive with that bit of time instead. And so we have this picture here that says, think twice, is this how you want to spend your time? And, you know, this is a, a strategy that I used with one of my clients too. It wasn't exactly the same thing, but we put a little red sticker dot on the back of her phone. And that was just to remind her to pause for a moment. And does she really need to be on the phone? So it just gave her that little pause, you know, to think about it. So it's sort of the, along the lines, the, the same thing. Yeah, yeah um, for sure. The other thing I would want to add to this is uh, in the original post, uh, they had asked or had said, um, I set boundaries, but my brain always finds a loophole or does not honor them unless they are instituted and enforced by external force. So one of the things I just want to say is in the conversation that we had in Discord around this, uh, one of my ideas or thoughts too was to not necessarily look for the the the, the negative consequence that's going to happen if you keep doing this because there's this negative energy around it. What if we looked at it as what you're gaining from it when you're not on these devices the way that you're currently using them? Mm -hmm. So it is a it's a it's just a mindset and it's keeping it positive rather than staying in the negative. So I just think it's really important to think about what you're gaining and not that you have to have something really bad happen to you in order to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't agree with that anymore. Uh, it is um, super important. And I think that the particularly around social media or the, the news machine, like the news rage machine, mm -hmm. um, all of those things are designed to make you feel like you're missing out, uh, you know, when you're not like it's false. Right. It's false. Yeah. The most important news of the day will find you. Yes, it will find you. You don't need yes. to have those sources. You don't need to be sort of awash a in, in those algorithms to to get there. So retrain your brain to to imagine like to gamify the stuff that is going to be good for you and healthy mm -hmm. for you. And uh, that's super powerful. Um, we uh, we had our, our friend uh, Matt Rakelboom was on the show a while ago and he posted this to Instagram and Melissa uh, Discord mom had had shared this um, this video for us to talk about, but I'm just, I'm just going to play it 
I'm yes. just going to play it. Can I do oh, that? Oh, great. Please. All right. So let's just see what Matt has to say. Do you have ADHD and your addictive tendencies are kind of kicking your butt right now? Well, here's not an excuse, but here's why and a helpful tip at the end of the video. People with ADHD tend to struggle with things like anxiety, depression, and overall struggling with everyday activities, which can leave us a little sad. The issue and the reason why our addictive tendency set in is our body's always trying to achieve a state of homeostasis, which means that when we're a little bit sad, our body tries to look for things that make us a lot more happy. Unfortunately, this can lead us into things like masturbatory activities, drinking alcohol, smoking the devil's lettuce, and more. So we need to realize that when we are sad, this makes our addictive tendencies tend to flare up a lot more than normal. A helpful tip, make sure to ask yourself what's known as the HALT technique, which is hungry, angry, lonely, tired. If you're feeling more than one of these at the moment, then make sure to take care of these before we engage in addictive activities. These are the four things that really make our brain go, we got to change this. Think about this and change your life. You're worth it. One of the things that he talks about in there that I think is really important, and you'll note, he talks about addictive behaviors. He does not call it addiction because we know that there are behaviors that mimic addictive behaviors. We know that those are the same thing, that, that they really appear. It's easy to make those appearances uh, 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 come to uh, feel like, like you are addicted, but he doesn't say that. And I, I applaud Matt for, for doing that, but he does give us the big four, the halt, which is such a game changer, such mm -hmm. a game changer. Uh, are you hungry, angry, lonely, or tired? Are you hungry, angry, lonely, or tired? When you pick up your device, are you hungry and angry? Are you angry and lonely? Are you lonely and tired? Those are the things that are going to cause you to look for those dopamine boosts, just the same way it's going to cause you to pick up chocolate instead of a carrot. Like right. your body gets that <laughs> sugar boost and it's like, oh, now I feel better. Oh, I've got dopamine. Now I feel better. So what are you going to do when you are hungry? It's, it's like babies. Like if you've had a baby mm -hmm. and they're crying, they've either pooped themselves or they're mm -hmm. hungry, right? Like so that's what it made me think of is like, yeah. okay, you have a baby. You can't like, they can't talk to you. They can't tell you what's wrong. So you're trying to figure it out. Yeah, yeah totally. Right. So mm -hmm. it's, it's like, if you get those two things, uh, if you get the, if you solve the two things around, uh, you know, around, um, pooping and, and hunger, you have a baby that doesn't cry. Uh, and so that's, uh, you know, it is, it is what it is. I uh, feel like this is, uh, you know, keeping the halt thing in the back of your mind uh, is uh, a, a pretty, could be a pretty big game changer uh, no, around how you're, uh, you know, how you're handling your instincts, your baser instincts to satisfy this stuff. So thank you to Matt. It's been a long time. You should come back and hang with us again on the show. Uh, Absolutely. And thanks for his permission to use that in this show. So uh, what else you got? You got anything else on your list? No, I think I think we covered a lot today. I do too. I think and I need to go really take a stab at it. it's a really important subject. So I'm glad that, <laughs> thank you for asking the question about where to get started in Discord, the uh, lovely member that did that because it yeah. did it did create a lot of conversation. And, uh, and I think we got some really great uh, ideas and feedback from the other members too. So thank you for being a part of this community, everyone. Appreciate yeah, it. For sure. So much. It's, it's so rich and we so appreciate it. And uh, uh, now I, I think we're going to, uh, we're going to hang up. Now, if you uh, are not uh, a member, then the show is going to end. But if you were a member, you would be continuing to listen and we would continue talking as we take on uh, questions and comments from the community in our Discord channel. So uh, hang out with us, become a member. It would be great. We really appreciate all of you for downloading and listening to this show. Thank you for your time and attention. If you want to become a member, head over to patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. Sign up at the deluxe level or better. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll see you right back here next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast.